Good morning and welcome to New Hope. Hey, have you ever had one of those thoughts or uh, like a feeling that you just can't put into words as much? I mean, like you, you kind of understand it in your head, but when, you're, when you try to explain it to somebody, you just can't get it out. I mean, those moments are so frustrating and they can create so much stress and not only for us, but also for the people around us. Those things, they just hold this, this strange power over us. This elusiveness of clear thought and, and language. And that, that allows us to be able to, to wrangle these thoughts in some form of submission. Otherwise, these thoughts, they, they run rampant through our minds. And not just our minds, but they run rampant through our bodies because we feel that tension in our bodies. And, and it's like dragging along emotions and it's kicking up dust of stress and anxiety that multiplies the fogginess within us. We're going to talk about spiritual disciplines. And the first one that I want to talk about is putting those thoughts into words, capturing those thoughts. So we're going to be starting a series on creating space. We've, we've uh, kind of done the introduction. We've talked about creating space for God. This is a series within a series. We were uh, started with Timothy. We were in 1 Timothy chapter 4. There's the verse that says, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. And so we've hit the pause button there, and we're asking the question, what does that mean to discipline ourselves for the purpose of godliness? And so we're talking about spiritual disciplines, but understanding that when we say spiritual, we're not just saying this ethereal side of us or this unseen side of us, that we're actually talking about the complete whole person. And so we're going to be talking about in spiritual terms, but that impacts the physical aspect of us, the mental aspect, the emotional aspect, the, the relational aspect, the financial aspect. It impacts everything about our lives when we practice these spiritual disciplines. And we want to make sure that we're practicing them with a purpose so we're not just saying, listen, here's some tasks, and we want to be really dogmatic about these tasks, that you make sure that you, you do these things. We're not saying that these are just going to be rote behaviors that begin and end with a stopwatch, and if you've done them, then you're done. That's not the issue. That's discipline that leads to drudgery, and we're avoiding that. We want to envision the goal that we have related to these spiritual disciplines. These are, these are not in and of themselves the goal. These are stair steps to a better relationship with God. God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. See, what we're going to be doing with these disciplines is we're going to be making space for God and inviting Him into our lives. Uh, for me personally, I have this, this image of, of, of having God, inviting God into this, this dimly lit um, library. I just love, can you tell? I just love the, the imagery of this, this library with these overstuffed leather chairs and sitting there and, and, and inviting God into that space where we can be calmly in relationship with one another and talking and he's a guest in my space i want to allow him and invite him into everything that i do i just envision us sitting there with a with a cup of hot coffee and, and talking about life it's a very peaceful place in my mind not that i get there all the time and not that i'm great at accomplishing that but that's the image that i have that i'm striving for through these spiritual disciplines it's a much di different image than saying uh I, in fact i'm going to avoid the image entirely of god as this god of 
of conveyor belt. This guide that we put on a conveyor belt, like at a grocery store with all these other things, and it's just going to kind of move past. We're going to take him, we're going to scan him, and we're going to put him in a grocery cart, and we're going to take him home and stick him in a cabinet or a cupboard until I need him. That's not the relationship that we're striving for. We're striving for one where God is intricately and intimately involved in everything that we do. So the first thing that I want to talk about to that end today is capturing words. The idea of words and the idea of capturing those words. Now, I'm covering this one first because I believe it to be a building block for all the other disciplines. This is going to be immensely helpful in our journey. This is one of those keystone habit. And the keystone habit is the thing that if we'll put that in place, it's going to have a ripple effect across everything else that we do. So I think this, if we can, we can begin to work on this, it is a keystone habit that will show great benefit in everything that we do. And we, we talk about capturing words. And what we mean is we want to process our thoughts. We want to process our emotions, uh, our memories, our histories, our daily activities. And we want to begin writing them down on paper. Now, that's a scary thought. In fact, I, I think about some of the scariest places on earth, you know, and we might think, well, it's, it's that that closet in the corner of the room at night or or it's the, the creepy basement, you know, in, in, in the house or it's like the depths of the ocean, or maybe for some of us, we think about creepy places and we think a haunted house, but I think the scariest place on earth is inside of ourselves because so often we just don't want to go there. You know, John Calvin once said, without knowledge of self, there is no knowledge of God. And, and that's not even a, a new idea. That's like Socrates said something similar back like in 400 BC. He said, an unexamined life is not worth living. Paul tells the church in the Newer Testament, he, he writes a letter to, to the, the Corinthians and tells them to examine themselves, to test themselves, to, to dig into your interior heart and your thoughts and examine what's going on. So capturing words on paper is one of the best, if not the best way of doing that. If our goal is to create a genuine relationship with God, and I hope that's our goal as we step into this series, if that's our goal, to create a genuine relationship with God, then we have to be vulnerable with him. We have to truly share our souls with him. And we cannot do that if we don't know ourselves well enough to share it. And herein lies the power of words. See, if we can capture that, we need to... Uh, place that in words, if we can carve out some time to process our thoughts, to process our emotions, to process our memories, to corral it all onto paper, then that's going to be immensely helpful in us understanding ourselves. And again, we go back to that idea, well, I can't put it into words. And this is where the work comes in. We need to ask the question, is the struggle of finding the words to corral these thoughts, is it worth it? Is it worth it for all the benefits that we're going to get? You know, the rambling emotions, the rambling thoughts, the chaos that bombard us from within, they must be tamed. And the only way to do it is to capture them. Some people ignore them. I got a friend who, whenever we begin discussing uh, difficult topics or emotional things, 
Uh, he talks about getting his shovel. He just takes all that stuff out back and buries it in the yard. And so he doesn't have to deal with it. He's going to bury all that, uh, bury the emotions and not deal with it. And I have to admit that uh, I have done that from time to time. Uh, some uh, drown them out. We either get in the car, turn on the radio, turn it up. We come home, we sit down and we turn on the television. We get on the computer, we start uh, uh, surfing the web. We, we get uh, on the our gaming system and play our games. We open up our phones and and kind of drown everything out by going through our phones on and on and on. So many different ways that we drowned out those things. We ignore them. And then there's also the people who medicate them into a false submission. We can we can meditate all those emotions, all those thoughts, all that chaos, we can medicate it into a false submission with alcohol or, or, or with drugs. Some people, some people do it with, with anger at the world. Uh, some people do it with food or shopping, again, etc. So many ways. But, but if we can harness the power of that stuff that's going on inside of us, then they become great resources for growth. They become excellent resources for creation. You know, the gospel writer John, he opens up his gospel saying, in the beginning was the word. See, there's that that idea that the, the word, the importance of the word, the word was clear. It spoke creation into existence. It revealed a benevolent God to mankind. The word chased back chaos and darkness. And I believe God uses that language very intentionally. Word. And if we will do the work, then the words, we can do the same. They can do the same for us. If we will do the work and capture all of that internal stuff in words, then we can have creation. We can create new things. We can we can see God more clearly. We can chase back the darkness and the chaos. But we're not going to do that all by ourselves. See, this is the same word that indwells within us through the Holy Spirit. And with the word, the Holy Spirit, the, the Spirit of Jesus, with the word in us, then we partner with him. And then we can wrestle through life and capture things and put it on paper. Paul writes to the Romans uh, in chapter 8, he says, In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. We do not know how to pray or write or journal or, or express as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words, and he searches the hearts, knows the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And then he also writes to the church in Corinth. He says, For to us, God revealed them through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts and spiritual words. I think what this passage is talking about is the difficulty of probing our thoughts, the difficulty that we have sometimes of of, of placing all of the stuff that goes on in our heads and in our hearts into tangible language for examination and how God will help us do that. And the beauty of this is that it's one of the reasons that God indwells us. One of the reasons that God lives within us in order to help us, that is the, the Holy Spirit. He's the helper and so as we are striving to find ways to make space for God, God partners with us 
to move around the interior mess, to redecorate, to reorganize inside of us. So we take that step and then God walks with us as we do that to help make space. It's a beautiful aspect that, that again, right away, God is walking with us to accomplish that. And it is this work with the Holy Spirit that thoughts disentangle themselves. As we place words on paper by the guidance and the direction of the Holy Spirit, it becomes uh, truly almost miraculous as, as we put it into practice. And so maybe the question is simply how? How do we do this? How is it that we capture thoughts? And, and I'm going to say there is uh, this, the simple answer is pen and paper. Write. That's it. And there's endless ways that, that uh, where you can do this, and we're going to talk about some of them over the coming weeks, but, but just write. Just just start by writing down your grocery list. Uh, pour out your to-do list on, on paper. Get it out of your head. And then allow that to progress naturally in, in wherever your heart leads you. Maybe you write down your hopes and your dreams. Maybe write down your prayers. Uh, prayer journaling is, is incredible. We'll talk about that later. Maybe write down some poetry. I just received uh, a poem from a lady at church here. Beautiful poem here. And uh, two pages long where she uh, put pen and paper together and, and crafted this beautiful poem. Uh, study as you open your Bible to, to study a passage. Jot down your thoughts about it and jot down what you're learning. Meditation, uh, if you just meditate on some aspect of life, you can journal through that. What are you thinking? What are you, what's going through your heart as you're doing that? Gratitude. Write down the things that you're thankful for. We so often get um, caught up in thinking about the things that anger us or the things that we're not thankful for, the things that we want that we don't have. But journaling about things that we're thankful for can really change our hearts. And I tell you, it's really a strange thing. It is so strange because it's very, very difficult to start. I absolutely love journaling and I love the concept more than I love the actual doing it because it's a chore, but it's worth it. It's difficult to start, and some days it's going to seem absolutely pointless. You get done, and really all you have is like a grocery list or a to-do list. But some days, some days you will sit back in awe, and you will surprise yourself by stringing together some cohesive thoughts that finally, finally capture what you've been thinking or what you've been feeling or what you've been fearing. So I want to encourage you, I want to challenge you to start. Simply sit and write 20 minutes each day. And at this point, no specific agenda. Just sit down and write for 20 minutes. Just fill pages. If you'll do this consistently, then your body and your mind and the spirit will pour out of you what needs to come out if you stick with it. So we say if it's worth it, what are the benefits? Well, again, disentangling thoughts is huge, but it goes far, far beyond that. In fact, there's uh, modern studies that talk about the benefits of journals, that journaling and writing down your thoughts, uh, that are in excess to what scripture talks about. And so the modern benefits, one article says, writing has incredible benefits for our cognitive processing and decision-making capabilities. Writing down your thoughts forces you to articulate them in a different medium. And again, that's capturing those, those thoughts and feelings and put them on paper. It's, uh, it forces us to articulate them in a different medium. You have automatically started processing information when you write it down. It adds to your understanding and helps clear up any vagueness those ideas may have had while just running through your head. Love that. A, a list of other things that are, are benefits. It actually has been shown to reduce anxiety and depression. Uh, it helps you to break away from nonstop cycle of obsessive thinking and brooding. Because again, we capture it. 
Uh, it improves the awareness and perception of events. Uh, it regulates emotions. We begin to be able to understand our emotions better. Uh, it encourages awareness. It begins, it actually has an impact on physical health. Listen to some of these things. It lowers blood pressure. It improves lung and liver function. That was mind boggling to me. Um, if uh, For people who are in the hospital, it has less time spent in the hospital. It produces better moods in people, uh, improved psychological well-being, fewer depressive and avoidance symptoms, uh, reduced stress-related visits to the doctor, less work absenteeism, less time out of work following a job loss, and for students, higher grade averages. Again, studies are showing the benefits. Personally, it helps me to communicate better. I know that when I am faithful in doing this, my relationships improve, especially like with my wife. I can better communicate my thoughts and my feelings because I've spent the time articulating them on paper. Um, I'm more in tune with my walk with Jesus. I'm more in tune when I feel Jesus nudging me in a direction. I feel like I can hear God better. And not to minimize all these benefits, but one, but the one that I want to key on is remembering. The journaling helps us to remember. When God spoke to Moses, he wanted him to remember everything that he has said, as well as share it. He told him, write it down. And thank God he did. That's what we have for scripture today, what, what was written down. And by taking the time to write on a regular basis, it not only helps us to process the events and thoughts of our days, but also helps us to remember them. That biblical word for remember is zakar. It's a beautiful word because it means calling to mind and taking appropriate action. Calling to mind and taking appropriate action. It's a much deeper word than our English word to remember because uh, English to remember is simply calling to mind. Biblically, remember means calling to mind and responding and acting as a result. Acting on behalf of what is called to mind. So remember all that the Lord has done, not only through the pages of Scripture, but also in your life. That's what we're doing when we're writing. We're writing about our lives. We're writing a, a memoir of sorts. And a memoir is actually a word that comes from the same root that the word remember comes from. Recording your life and the interactions between you and God and others. It sets it in your mind. It allows you to learn from mistakes and it gives you a clear vision in hindsight how God has carried you through some very, very difficult times. And an added benefit is that you now have a legacy that you can leave to the next generation. Having a part of your soul expressed through words, that's going to provide far more comfort, a far different comfort than a monetary inheritance ever could. So I want to close with the words of Donald Whitney, who wrote Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life. He said it provides an opportunity for the intangible, we're talking about journaling, provides an opportunity for the intangible grays of mind work and heart work to distill clearly into black and white. Then we're better able to talk to God with both mind and spirit. You know, when we take communion in the church, we learn that through the journaling process 
that God, that God did. Through the inspiration of God, Scripture was written. And that tells us the events of his son as he walked this earth. It tells us about the night that his son sat at a meal with 12 of his students and how he used the elements of that meal to express words. I mean, complex words, complex imagery. He says, I'm using bread and cup to, to explore the depths and the implication of the entire biblical story. And then Jesus shares the words. Shares the words that are recorded in pen and ink. And he says, they're meant to help us to remember. To call to mind and to take appropriate action. So Jesus calls us, calls us into this journey, calls us into this process of remembering. He invites us to do that. And he's modeled it through scripture itself. So that's not just our challenge, but God's challenge to you this week. Begin processing life through pen and paper and grow closer to God. Because that's the goal. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, I thank you for this time together. And we do ask that um, that you help us for every little step that we take in creating space, that you would partner with us to help us make that space. That you would then fill that space. Lord, and that's what we've seen through scripture and the book of Exodus as as your people created the tabernacle, you filled the tabernacle. As they created the temple, you filled the temple. So Lord, as we give you our hearts, you fill our hearts. So I ask now as we put these disciplines into practice, Lord, that again, you would be faithful and show up. We thank you. We thank you for all the blessings that you've given us. And, and I pray that those are... Uh, an opportunity for us to begin this recording process. And we look forward to many more. We ask your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, I would love to hear how this impacts you, and especially how by practicing it, um, how it impacts you. Uh, so sh feel free to shoot me an email, give me a phone call. I uh, look forward to hearing about it and we'll cover another discipline next week. Stay safe and stay healthy.